let's get it going on the Lockdown Royals Padres crossover episode. I'm your host, Ryland Styles. You're looking at Javier Reyes dancing. He hosts Lockdown Padres. I have opinion on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles on Twitter. My show's at Lockdown Royals. His show is at LO Padres on Twitter. HelloFresh mm-hmm. is sponsoring today's episode. You can skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooked meals easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com. HelloFresh has an amazing offer. It's HelloFresh.com slash MLB60. That's HelloFresh.com slash MLB60 to use the code MLB60 for 60% off plus free shipping whenever you go to HelloFresh. Javi, Mm. baseball season is underway. Mm. We've had some news to react to. Oh, yeah. The Rays have the best start since the 2003 Royals. Mm. Which, how did that 2003 Royals season end up? I'll tell you, not in the postseason oh. after having that hot, ahead, hot, hot start. And so that brings me to this topic, as is a topic every season. I think that there are two different camps. As you mm. see the Rays go 9-0 and and the Royals, although they did finish you know, above 500, 83 and 79, uh, they, they did not make the postseason. In fact, finished third in the division after that blazing hot start. And I think that there's two camps here. There's the baseball fans who say nothing matters until until August. None of this matters. It's just stupid. Uh, and then there's baseball fans who like overreact and are like, well, the season's over. They got one hit uh, on the first Saturday of April. Like, mm-hmm. there's There's got to be some middle ground there. And so I think it's interesting to have a conversation with you today about when you think it's appropriate to react to this news. When do you think it is time to hold steady and just say, "Hey, this happened," but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just keep we'll just keep checking in on it. We're not going to react to it. And when do you think it's time to hit that big red panic button in the center of your uh, of your baseball viewing experience? Obviously, there are so many variables for this. That's right. I'm going to start off my very. You got you got to start off a topic like this with a generic statement like that. You know what I mean? There's so much. It depends. You know what I mean? The way that I have gone about this for a while um, and ever since I've started doing the show is I think you can react to individual player developments, but not as much to a team. Um, And obviously, if there's like a ton of injuries that happen, then that's a good thing. Say like your best player, your best couple players and other ones out for a little bit. Like, let's say uh, the Phillies are a good example of this, right? Where it's like, oh, well, Bryce Harper, he's out until August and they lost Reese Haskins. So that's actually like some more tangible evidence i think that something could go wrong and for the most part though i don't really go by teams i like to go by players and like to see if there's any trends i.e uh, a pitcher's throwing slower they're not throwing a pitch or a pitch as much i think that in the early going you can learn a lot more from pitchers personally than you can from positional players i.e you know wad soto has like an ops of like 720 right now that's probably not going to keep up he's probably going to bounce that up into the the high 800s or 900s range um at least we hope. Uh, But I think that for pitchers, you look at, you know, changes in velocity, you look at spin rate stuff. That's what I've usually done uh, when evaluating things. And everyone likes to jump on those power rankings for one, because it's great engagement. It's easy to get people talking, but I know like there was a, the one from MLB that got put out uh, for April 10th, which was yesterday uh, by the time people were listening to this, had the Tampa Bay Rays one, the Atlanta Braves two, then Dodgers, then Yankees, then Padres. And I know some Padres fans were like, well, we just beat the crap out of the Braves, you know? And I think that that's fair, but I I just think it's always very silly for me uh, to complain about these one spot differences. Having the Padres as a top five team in baseball is not some type of damning insult. Damning insult would have them at like 15. Um, And I think that also baseball, you can't be looking at, well, we beat this good team. So how come... Uh, you can't beat this bad team or you beat a bad. Basically, you can't strength of schedule. There we go. That's what I was looking for is a little bit dangerous to go by, in my opinion, in the early going, because, you know, the A's scored how many runs against the Guardians a couple days ago? Are we going to use that as an indictment on the Guardians pitching? No, these things just happen. These are still professional players and they're going to have games where they just go nuts. Right. The Colorado Rockies, for some reason, are incredible against the Padres. 
but are they better than like i don't know the royals and the white Sox and you know some of those other lower tier teams probably not so the, but that doesn't mean just because they beat the padres that they should be higher right so that's that's a long-winded way of me kind of getting about my point but uh what do you think sir so I think that you're obviously right with like uh, there's variables and everything else. Yeah. But for me, <laughs> I think that these games do matter because if you end this season a game out of the playoffs, you could have made that game up in April, could have made it up in May, could have made it up in June, July, August, September, could have made it up at any time. Like it's not just the fact that you lost the last three games of the year to go out of the playoffs by a game that cost you the postseason. Like you, you mm-hmm. lost games every other month of the year as well. So they do matter. Um, I, I think that the approach to take with it is as fans, we have to get out of this whole like gotcha stuff of like mm. understanding things change. So, for example, let's say right now that you're following a team who cannot hit the baseball. We're going to make up a team. Okay. They have played 15 games, they've been. One hit 14 times, and they got a multi-hit game of eight hits once. It's okay at the end of those 15 games to say, this team cannot hit. And let's say let's say in two months from then, they play another 15-game sample size. And in those, they get 10 hits in each game of those mm-hmm. 15. You don't have to go back and say, well, see, you said this team couldn't hit, and look what they're doing now. Gotcha. Because that's, I think, what breads this whole non-committal, non-kind um, of anal- analyzation of these early games. You're afraid of what mm-hmm. happens if they do or don't change. You don't want to be on freezing cold takes. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's okay to allow things to change for the better and for worse. You can say right now, hey, this team's playing awesome. The pitching staff's looking good. And then in a couple months, the pitching staff that we didn't think was any good that's pitching good right now might not be pitching good. And then say, okay, well, they fell apart, and, and that happens. And so kind of just allowing yourself the grace to, to analyze things as it comes. Make your predictions, analyze what's happened, and then pivot from there and, and just continue to react to things. I think that that gets lost in everything. This is not the prediction business necessarily. It's the reaction business. We're reacting to what other people are doing. We're reacting to what GMs are are doing. We're reacting to what players are doing. We don't have a single iota of control over what the outcomes of anything are. Trades, signings, games, at-bats, whatever. So we have to remember, we're just here reacting to what's going on. And so our reactions are going to vary game to game, night to night, month to month, season to season. And so giving yourself that, that grace of, I don't have to be right today and in six months, just got to be right with what I see today. And, you know, I think that when you do that, you allow yourself to say, Hey, this is going really bad or really good right now, but it can always change and it can always change for better or worse. And then you kind of get out of it that way. Because if we just sit around here and say every day, well, it's too early. It's too early to talk about what we're seeing. Then we're just never going to talk about baseball. We're just Mm -hmm. never going to talk about baseball. If we do that. Exactly. And, you know, you, you can't do that for forever. Right. And I think that that's what our job is, is to provide some more nuance, not to just be like, hey, Padres won yesterday. They looked good. Instead, sometimes I even get on here and like, I don't think they played well at all. I think that they kind of looked out in that game. You could look at teams that have a winning record and say, I actually don't think this will continue. Or you could look at ones with bad records or you can do a mixture of, of all sorts of shapes and sizes and colors and whatnot. And that's what's fun about this, I think, in a lot of ways. And I know that like, you know, there's not as much room for nuance sometimes with sports fans. Uh, you can see that with, say, the, the other sport that you cover, the NBA, where if you think it's Embiid, you're an idiot, according to the Giannis and Jokic fans. And especially if you don't think it is Embiid, the Philadelphia fans will practically want to hang you from the Liberty Bell. Right. So this isn't necessarily the business of nuance, but I do think that um, it's, it's important to just kind of remember that stuff. And I would take it individually. You know, if you see, hey, there's a rumor that this player's fastball that the velocity is down and they go in there in their first couple starts and that fastball is getting killed. It's really fair to react to that in my opinion, but for someone else, like say Manny Machado where it's like, Oh, he hasn't hit a home run yet. Bust confirmed. It's like, no, like actually it's just, it's a little bit of a slow start. He's earned more patience. There's some guys who earn patience, some guys who don't. 
that's what's fun about this. And I think, like you said, sometimes people can be afraid to be a little bit committal to a certain take. Or people are afraid to be super. I'm not afraid. They're too eager to be committal to a take. Like your, I don't know, like a, like a, let's say Mike Francesa type, where you just say something crazy or bold prediction, and you just completely pretend like it never happens. <laughs> and then you just move on as time goes on. So uh, it's it's all over the place, man. But I do think that in baseball, it's it's complicated. It's really complicated because you can't do it as much because the sheer amount of games as you can do with. Uh, basketball and certainly with the NFL. So yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough, man, but we still love it at the same time. We still do love it at the same time. And so it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of fun to, to watch it and everything and, and react to it in, in a very, a variety of ways, of course. But, uh, you know, I, I just look forward to reacting to this news and, being okay with with looking forward and, and, and with kind of projecting things and everything. Because again, I just feel like we can't sit here and you know be like, well, why doesn't anyone cover baseball? Why doesn't anybody talk about baseball? And then whenever they do talk about baseball, ostracize them of like, well, it's 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 only April. It's only April. You know, there's there's a you know a, a compromise to, to be had. You're not saying that the Padres season is over because they lost three games to a bad team, but they did lose three games to a bad team and this needs to get fixed. This needs to get solved, you know, and, and here's examples of how to try to solve them. I think that kind of meeting in the middle there is a really good thing for, uh, for baseball as a whole. Also, we're going to talk about one thing that we are finding very encouraging and discouraging about our teams coming up. Mm-hmm. But first I want to say right now, the better good friends over at the so rare, mm. So rare is awesome. Love these guys. They're our new sponsor. And they are revolutionary in the fantasy baseball game and marketplace with transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB. Cross. So, folks, <laughs> so rare. MLB <laughs> games happen twice weekly and span three to four days at the end of a game for the week, so rare will give you uh, MLB managers who rank at or near the top of the leaderboards and win a variety of rewards of your so rare collection team of collected, uh, you know, players that you get from this digital space. So go check it out today because so rare will allow you to climb those leaderboards. And then if once you do that, uh, you can win prizes, uh, so rare, uh, sac- uh, sacred cards. Game tickets, merchandise, signed jerseys, and a VIP experience like meeting MLB stars themselves in person. Prizes may vary depending on the competition, though. Whoa, that's cool. I like that, man. Head to SoRare.com slash LockedOn. That's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E dot com. Say it one more time. (laughs) S-O-R-A-R-E dot com (laughs) to draft your team of free player cards. Set your lineup and start competing today. Uh, to win epic rewards. Again, that's so rare.com slash locked on to get started playing today. So rare. <laughs> We're back. The locked on Royals Padres crossover. Javi, uh, what's one thing that you are disappointed about? About the Padres season to this point? Disappointment. You got to get, you know, you got to get the the vegetables before you get to dessert. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and with the Padres, for me, it's defense. Um, for me, it's been defense. You've seen a bunch of players make some mistakes so far, and I think that that was one of my bigger fears for the season heading into it. So it, it might not even call it a disappointment because I was projecting it, or at least I thought that this could be an issue. So it's nothing like gigantic, but I would say that it's the defense. It's the fact that Soto has looked pretty rough in left field at times, that in right field, even that they've kind of got a mishmash of guys as Ryland holds up his Kansas city chiefs, uh, coffee mug in front of my face. Uh, congratulations on your team being better than mine. Literally nobody disagrees with you on that. I don't know why you keep trying to flex that from me. Um, and also I think, you know, Jake Curterworth moving to first base. He's been good, but second base Hassan Kim has made some mistakes. Xander Bogarts had an errant throw 
in uh, this Brave series that they, of course, won three out of four. Of course, as as people may have heard, Nelly Cruz just going to town. It was a lot of fun. But I'd say that overall, just the defense stuff scares me. Um, it scares me that Osanola keeps playing infinitely more than Luis Campuzato. Uh, and that's one thing that's been frustrating for me as one of the leaders. I don't want to say the leader, but I'll say one of the lieutenants of the Campuzano hive. Uh, we stand strong. Thank you, Eddie Soldier. Uh, we stand strong, you know, hoping for our boy to get a little bit more of a shot. I am begging them to give him two games in a row one time in his damn career, please. Just two. That's all we're asking for. Give him a leash. Give him a little bit of time. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's basically the most disappointing things about the Padres. And then you would probably say, like, Juan Soto, who has basically been all or nothing and has hit, you know, a couple home runs that have been really nice. But, you know, lower than 200 average on base percentage has been good. But, Really, it's just been a couple of home runs and some mistakes. So hopefully he gets going. Uh, I basically said three things just now, but uh, I don't care. Uh, I, I hijacked your segment. My apologies. What about you, sir? Tell us about the Yeah, Rams. we've learned that how he can't count on this podcast. So <laughs> It's true. I'm going to be a man of my word because your word is your bond after all. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you one disappointment for this team. Okay. The one disappointment for this Royals team. Mm. The hitting. Mm. I have been on here mm-hmm. hyping up the Royals bats. You have all off season long. I've been on here telling you, you know, the hitting is not going to be a problem. And this lineup is going to be fun. This team is going to be competitive. This roster is not that bad. They're just going to have to work through some bad pitching outings and, and, and hopefully their lineup can make this game, you know, this team more fun, more competitive. I've been saying that all year. This team is hitting 184 as a team in batting average. Oh, but I don't like batting average because I'm a new age nerd. Okay. OBP, 255. Slugging, 321. OPS, 576 for this team as a whole. And and Oh, but, you know, really, we're such nerds that we only want the plus stats. Okay. OPS plus, 59. Total bases. Now listen, nerds, you can go into a locker if you don't think total bases matter. Total bases. 101 for Ooh. this season. They've Ooh. played, they've played, they've played 10 ball games. They have 101 total bases and a 59 OPS plus. So if you want to do traditionally, if you want to do advanced nerds on my God stats. Either way, this lineup has been brutal. Now they look more competitive against San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco, although you know the 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 box score might not truly reflect it in every game of the series, the at bats were more competitive. The approaches were a lot better, uh, and situational hitting was a lot better in San Francisco. And it's how you ended up with a win on uh, Saturday. But overall, as a unit, nobody's hit the ball particularly well. Even Vinny Pascantino, who I was hyping up and even Lindsey Crosby of lockdown prospects said that he would lead the league in batting average for the American league. He's hitting 258. And this guy that never strikes out has struck out six times on the season. Still not terrible, but like, you know, six times is more than ever. Uh, so uh, that's not very great, but overall, I think that this team's still going to be okay with the lineup. It's just disappointing right now, but You know, bats are going to have to heat up as the weather gets warmer. And this team is still a very young team. Like, you look up and down this lineup. Vinny Pascantino, young guy. Mike Massey, young guy. Bobby Wood Jr., young guy. You look up and down this lineup, and there's these are just all youngsters who are trying to find their way in this cruel MLB world. I think that they're going to make the adjustments uh, here pretty soon. So that's what I got on disappointing. Now, one positive, encouraging thing, K-Love is going to be the pitching staff. Mm. I've been telling you all offseason this pitching staff would suck. As a team, they have a below four ERA. You know, ERA plus 128. And the bullpen has yet again been good. Uh, Ryan Yarbrough, his ERA is inflated now. He's like a, almost eight ERA, but it's because he had a bad outing yesterday. He's been, he's been otherwise pretty good for this team. But Aroldis Chapman has been sensational. Uh, just talking yeah. strictly on the field, uh, a save, four innings, 
He only has one walk. He has eight strikeouts. He's back to 103, four, five, uh, triple dig. He's been really good. Yeah, Scott Barlow has been awesome in his three games. Hopefully he can get some more save situations. And then from the starters, you know, Chris Bubich has looked yep. excellent. Mm -hmm. And I've been asking all off season, can we see another pitcher take a leap? We saw Brady Singer last year after June one, it's like a massive leap. If he gets a running mate in that category, then things can really start to turn around. Zach Grinke has looked really good in his two starts. No, nothing blows you away about Zach Grinke, but he does his job and, and gives you a competitive uh, ball game. And with this lineup, we thought that that would be enough. And so when you look at the pitching staff, they're doing their job. In in the year of our Lord, 2023, you have a sub four ERA. You got to you gotta win more games than three. You know, you, you've got to win more games than three if you're giving up less than four runs uh, a game. And tell them you know it's been a shining moment for this pitching staff the thing is the the, the 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 question is that moves forward with this team can you flip the switch at the same time what i mean by that is can the hitters just come around right now while the pitchers are still hot or are the pitchers going to stay hot for like two more weeks and then the bats are going to get hot two weeks after that but now the pitching has gone down the drain mm -hmm. are they ever going to get on the same page and in sync mm -hmm. that's hard to do in baseball very but in right. order for this team to be competitive, they're going to have to do it. So can they can they work in syncrasy um, over the next few days, well, over the next few weeks, everything else? We'll see. Uh, but, Javi, what is your one thing you're very, very, very happy about? And I will say just to t um, piggyback off the Bubich thing that, you know, I was saying in the first segment how I like to look at if there's tangible, like, differences in individual players. I mean, his velocity – has been up for his changeup and his curveball. He's been generating more whiffs. Like this has been like a actual change, and he's been using his four seam fastball less, which might have been a pitch that it wasn't as effective for him. So you've actually seen tangible changes for him. You know what I mean? It's not like say Padres fans will know Adam Frazier a while ago, where did it seem like his his approach to the plate changed? Hard hit hit rate, all that stuff. He just had been hitting three hundred. That's usually a warning sign that maybe this is just kind of having a little of a lucky season. So, you know, shout outs to Bubich. I know you guys have been desperate for pitching. So that's really fun. And Grinky is just always a delight, uh, no matter what he's doing. I could watch that dude play Uno and it would be awesome. Um, for me, delightful surprise. I wasn't totally a thousand percent off out on the guy, but I was saying, all right, look, you know, I know that they probably have to keep him because they don't really have another replacement for him in, on this team in this system right now. But, hey, maybe if Pablo Lopez comes along, he's now on the Twins. But uh, Trent Grisham, if I could keep it just to one thing. Um, Trent Grisham has looked like kind of a player that Padres fans really thought that they were getting uh, these past couple of years, right? In 2021, at the beginning of it, he looked like that. In 2020, he certainly did. Um, but then last year, he was basically a – Gold glove defensive specialist only hitting below 200. Even though he had power, he was just striking out way too much. He was kind of like Joey Gallo without the, uh, you know, without the, without the same kind of type of slander sent his way, I guess you could say. But so far this season, he has been awesome. He looks more aggressive at the plate. He's barreling the ball more. And while the walks and strikeouts, you know, still leave a little bit to be desired, he still whiffs on a decent amount of pitches. When he misses, he misses, but much more aggressive at the plate, which is what I've liked to see. Uh, so far, and when he hits the home runs, the exit velocities on Grisham's home runs have been about as good as basically anybody on the team, if not the best overall. When he hits the ball out, it's harder than, you know, May Machado has yet to hit one out, but harder than Juan Soto's hit balls, harder than Hassan Kim's hit balls, harder than Jake Cronenworth, harder than basically everybody, even Xander Bogarts, who has th three home runs on the season. So I've loved watching Grisham play. And if he can just be an average offensive player with the defense, that's a huge asset. Uh, for this Padres team, especially considering they don't have uh, the most surefire outfield uh, necessarily in the early going so far. So I'd love seeing that. And I think that um, you just look at his overall slash line, 243, 333, 541. That's pretty, pretty good. He's been slugging the ball and I like what I'm seeing at the plate. So if he can just get a little bit to what he looked like in 2020, man, where you're talking about one of the better leadoff hitters in the game, um, obviously, depending on if it's lefty or righty pitching that that may change, but uh, I've loved it so far. And, you know, I, I think that there was some evidence of it. Hard hit rate spiked in the second half for him last year, better than almost anybody in baseball. 
And also, just as a general principle, he was almost so bad last year that there was, to, to, as Giannis Antetokounmpo would say, I love doing my NBA things whenever you're on the show. You know, that, that interview with him where he's like, I, I've been everywhere. I've been all the way down here. There's nowhere to go but up. You know, that's kind of was the case with Trey Grisham, I think, heading into the season. So far, he's been living up to it, and it's been a joy to watch, truly. You've been a joy to uh, talk with Javi, but truly, I, it's a joy to talk about our next good friends over Woo! at FanDuel. FanDuel.com slash locked on, folks, because guess what? It's that time. It's that time. Grand slams, no hitters, double plays are back. There's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started and sign up. Place your first bets and get a 1,000 uh, bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. Whenever you go there right now to FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com has amazing things for you, such as parlays to, to help you grow your winnings. It's the official partner of Major League Baseball and of the Lockdown Podcast Network. And folks, well, they're right now to FanDuel. And you can bet on tonight's game between the Padres and the Mets, as Metsy as it gets with the Padres. You got the Padres over under with the Mets set at seven and a half. Which side are you on on that one, uh, Javi? What do you think I'm on? What kind of what kind of trick question is this? You trying to you trying to trap me? Whoa, 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 buddy! Over under run scored for both teams. It's not a team question. A lot okay, of runs. I'm not, not going to lie. Uh, I think that this will be a little bit more calm uh, in a lot of ways, and I'm saying this because for those who listen to my previous podcast, I said the Braves were going to kick our butts, and then the exact opposite happened. So uh, basically, what I'm saying is now there will be about 28 runs scored for each team. I think within the first two games, that's probably what's going to happen now because I said that. All right. Well, thanks for paying attention, Javi. And go to <laughs> fan.com slash locked on. We're back on the locked on Pelicans, locked on Royals, locked on Padres podcast. <laughs> Pelicans? What in the world is wrong with you? <laughs> that's a triple A, that's a triple A team. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I thought you meant okay. NBA for a second. The Thunder are no, playing no. the Pelicans. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Come back, man. We need you. We need the MLB braid. Uh, so, Javi, is there anything across all of baseball? So, like, it can be your team. I'm not going to eliminate the Padres. It can be my team. I'm not going to eliminate the Royals. But just all of baseball. I'm not going to limit you either. Did you find something out over these first nine, ten games that had you known it two weeks ago, would have changed the way that you view this season? Oh, that's a great question. That's a great question. I think, wow, I got to think about this, man. I thought we were going to talk about my boy. The we are, we are. And so I'll we give are? you mine while, we, while, we, <laughs> okay. while you look up yours. Mine is the Rays. And we alluded mm -hmm. to the Rays 9-0 and, and the Royals 9-0 in 2003. The reason I think that this is different and the reason why I'm buying more into it and kicking myself for it is because we always know this. Like it's it, it's like a it's like a yeah. it's like a disease that us baseball fans have that aren't in the Tampa Bay St. Petersburg area. Like we always say all winter long, well, they're the Rays. They're gonna find a way to win. They're gonna find a way to do good. And then every you know January, February, March, every every prediction season come around coming around for March. We always go, ah, that Rays won't be any good. Let's pick the Yankees. Let's pick the let's pick the Red Sox. Let's pick, you know, whoever else you know that you want to pick in the AL. And we just forget. Like, like we tell ourselves all winter, the Rays find a way to be good. And then when it comes time to predict predict the season, we say, ah, the Rays are gonna stink this year. The magic's gonna run out. The magic never runs out. The magic for them never runs out. And so that's why I'm buying in this nine no start where I, I wish I would have um put them put them more in that uh contenders role more in that um not like world series contention necessarily but like more in the role of like hey this is a legitimate playoff team and then once you get into the playoffs anything in the world can happen like anything in the world can happen in a in a baseball sample size because uh, there's no sample size in the postseason big enough to 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 justify like something odd not happening it's why baseball has and is susceptible to the most upsets in the in, in the sports world besides maybe hockey and so um I wish I would have put more respect on the Rays because I knew better and we all knew better and we continue to do this to ourselves uh, every year. So hat tip to the Rays. It's a good one. It's the obvious one. The Rays 
Look, I, I just think that that division is awesome. So that's also worth pointing out. And I don't really care that they haven't played like that many incredible teams so far. Um, last year was really bad for that team. They had Juan Franco get hurt. Brandon Lowe was off. You know, they had uh, still no Tyler Glass now, who they should be getting back soon. So a lot of things went poorly. The Rays will just not, they won't, you could get them an off year once. You know what I mean? They, they might be off one year, but it's not going to happen again. They, they adapt. They're like a, they're like the, they're like a sentinel robot. You know what I mean? They just adapt and learn to every power and all that. And then they hunt you down. That's the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, for me, it's kind of a fun, dumb one that I'm not going to spend too much time on, but I wish I slandered the A's more and praised the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, and what I mean by that is the Cincinnati Reds actually executed a proper rebuild. Um, while the A's, I genuinely don't think you can name more than two players on that team, aside from, for me, like Ramon Laureano and like Paul Blackburn. Like, that's basically it. While the Reds have some really exciting players, you got Jonathan India, you got Tyler Stevenson, and also Hunter Green, while he's been really rough, guy throws like 100 miles an hour, so it's just cool to watch that. And Nick Lodolo and Graham Ashcraft for them. Um, I know Lodolo was getting some slander from some uh, a certain uh, prospect uh, analyst who people may be familiar with and didn't even include him like on his top 100, which is crazy. Uh, he has been phenomenal with a 1.5 ERA and 21 strikeouts through two starts. So he's been pretty great. Um, that would be kind of my thing that I wish I did more uh, before this season sort of took place. And maybe I could argue about the whole my uh, – Mariners or Phillies would drop out of the playoff race, but still a little bit too early on those teams. So I'm not going to celebrate on that just yet. I respect both and all of those decisions. I really, really do. So Javi, let's talk about your boy. Let's talk about my boy. <laughs> For those who are unfamiliar, it happened about a week ago. I didn't get a chance because of all the the craziness. I had some personal stuff come up as well, so I couldn't record a podcast on it. But it started with a tweet from Darnay Tripp saying Cade McClure will be telling people for years about the time he gave up an absolute nuke to Fernando Tatis Jr. There was the video of it. It's an absolute bomb off him. He's been doing better in the minors. Expected return uh, April 20th around that time. And then Cade McClure responded with the, an asterisk thing with a bunch of asterisks saying, Cheater hits a home run on a rehab assignment during a steroid suspension. And then, my friend, the fires, the flames, they started flickering. You know, you, you know, I know you. You're a big stove guy. You love using the stove. You know, that's what you, you love using. <laughs> and the, the fires were rising on this one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and Padres sort of freaked out. A bunch of, it was, it was a, bunch, a, a bunch of blogs were talking about and whatnot. Uh, Fernando Tatis's mother actually got into it saying a player with seven years in minor league just wanted a minute of fame. That was the reason he used uh, a superstar player name to obtain visibility. And with the laughing, not the laughing emoji, but like that ugh, like crazy tongue, weird eyeball emoji on her Instagram story. Um, look, I, th I have a bunch of different opinions on this. Number one, I think that this reminds me, and I've talked about this too when during the Astros debacle was happening, that I think it's important for fans, not necessarily players. Players can say what they want because they're more closer to it, but... I think it's important for fans not to like associate players with bad things and being like, oh, well, you root for a team that does this. You root for a team that does this. You know, you, you have this player on your team, so you must be. I think it's really important not to do that because then your team could get caught with the same sort of thing, whether that be, you know, some some tough characters with off the field issues or it be cheaters in the case of someone like Fernando Tatis Jr. And I think that. You know, I remember um, basically I'm saying don't throw stones from glass houses to an extent uh, is what I'm talking about, where I just don't I never liked how all these fans were attacking the crap by the Astros. And I get it to an extent, but you also got to be careful not to say like implying almost that this could never be something your team would do. Trust me, every team is capable of doing all sorts of bad stuff. Uh, plenty of teams will hire or assign a Roberto Ozuna or a Mike Clevenger or whatever, right? I think that that's worth pointing out. And it is also true that, you know, players, I know some people pointed out they love to attack Tatis here, but then they don't attack those guys who have done things that are admittedly a lot worse off the field. But on the other side of things, I also don't believe in just because you complain about one thing, but not other things that that renders your complaint um, a moot point or uh, useless, right? 
I don't, I think people throw around hypocrite too much. You know what I mean? Where it's like, just cause you talked about this one thing that's bad, that's happening. Um, you know, means that you can't talk about the rest cause you didn't talk about this. Right. Um, Kyrie Irving, another, I'm going to do more NBA for you. He, he did all these nice things. So I don't want to hear it. Cause you weren't talking about that. But then when he did this thing, actually both things could be true. All of his tweets about the movie and blah, 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 that we're not going to get into. That's also bad. Those good things he did are good. You know what I mean? So I don't want to yell at players who are more than their right to complain about Fernando Tatis Jr.'s thing. He's a goober. I still stand by. I don't think that this should be treated with the same sort of vitriol and hatred as other things in our world that human beings sometimes do. Much harder and more, in my opinion, profoundly impactful um, bad things that people do. But uh, it's totally fair for players to be like this. Look, he earned this. He's going to get slander from more players. It's going to happen because he cheated. Um, whether it was, I'm not going to get into like the, the the degree of which he cheated and whatnot. But I think that if anything I've said has made sense so far, I know I've kind of gone a little bit all over the place. But, um, you know, I, I just think that this is what happens, guys. You know what I mean? And I'm not here to make fun of this minor league pitcher and say, oh, that's going to be the highlight of your career. Not here to say that. I get it. And also at the same time, a little bit of sour grapes for sure. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like a hundred percent. It's sour grapes that you choose to bring up the suspension and the cheater thing after he launched an absolute nuke off of you. Right. Uh, when MLB is clearly probably monitoring to see if he does anything again. Right. So definitely some sour grapes. He's allowed to also complain about it. That doesn't make him a hypocrite. Would I like if players spoke up more about bad things that other players do? Of course. But, you know, those things get complicated uh, in organizations and infrastructures and whatnot. So did that make any sense, Mr. Rylan Styles? I know I got a, a long-winded bit there. Uh, yeah, it made perfect, total, and good, honest sense um, <laughs> uh, of what you're... <laughs> Only you can say those words in a way that made it sound like you absolutely did, did not believe the nonsense coming out of your mouth just now. Unbelievable stuff. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> he can't even speak. He's a loss for words, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I didn't look, think that you would like act like that was. I didn't think that was sarcastic. I think it made perfect sense, and I agree maybe it's just because I know you. I think that's the problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm just I, always on guard. You know, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And not that I'm like going to be easily triggered by this, right? Like Padres fans, calm down. It's just a dub comment. Like you don't want to be like a a Bryce pa uh, Patrick right of locked on rangers where every criticism sent the rangers way you know what i mean one of the biggest divas at locked on we love bryce but one of the biggest divas where you say anything bad about the rangers oh he's coming after you you know what i mean it's, it's like the philly fans with joel Embiid, right so you don't want to be like that and again he he earned it he earned this thing i just hope that i'll only get mad if like 10 years from now people are still bringing this you know what i'm saying like he's got to earn his reputation back if nothing happens in like 15 years from now y'all are still talking about this like grow up a little bit you know what i mean like just stop it's just, enough is enough with this purity test that people do with this stuff but hey that's just my feeling well great feeling to have and i i wholeheartedly agree with that feeling um it's really great i mean it's honestly just a great synopsis of what happened. Um, you think that you broke it down exquisitely. I think that you uh, handled it well and uh, you. the emotions get the best of you. Um, you. Yeah. I, it's like you said, what are you going to do? They've got you in a corner. Uh, you, you, you did steroids. So in the eyes of another player, that's cheating. Mm -hmm. um, I would counter it with, he supposedly at least isn't doing steroids when he hit that nuke. So it doesn't really matter, but uh, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Javi, thanks for joining us. Any last uh, closing thoughts? Uh, last thoughts are, can't wait for this Mets series this week. I'm going to be at the Wednesday game. Very exciting. My first game in person uh, of the season so far. Very exciting. Uh, wh why are you getting closer to the mic? <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a little meet and greet lined up for any Padres fans that are out oh, there? Oh, I mean, hey, look, if there's a Padres fan who listens to this pod or even Royals pod, Sure, just tweet at me. DM me. My DMs are open. Hey, if you're uh, at the game, give, sure. Give him, a, give him a section to meet you at in the middle of the fifth inning. Yeah, exactly. Hey, my boy Joshua D. Landis, my dude Josh, he met me at the Nationals game last year. He reached out, and I was like, holy crap, this is crazy that you're at this game right now. Uh, so, yeah, everybody feel free to do that for sure. All right, meet Javi in section 125, middle of the fifth inning uh, on Wednesday, Mets pods. Until we meet again, Javi, be good.
be good to one another.